was asked by also multiple people, uh, what is, you guys have collabed with lots of artists, um, obviously John Bellion and also um, like Anderson Pack, like a no, we haven't collaborated with Thank you, everybody, for coming. Welcome to UC Irvine's Anteater TV's first ever Zot Sessions Lounge. My name is Lauren Wong. I will be the reporter today, and I'm very excited to announce our first guests. Clyde and Gracie from the band Lawrence. And if you guys want to introduce yourselves or say anything, feel free to. No, I mean, I'm Clyde. That's I'm Gracie. Gracie. We're siblings. Um, our last name is Lawrence, so that's why the band's called Lawrence. <laughs> We're happy to be here in the inaugural episode. Thank you for having <laughs> us. Thank you for joining us. And um, so as a reminder to everyone in um, coming in right now, uh, unfortunately, as you can see, they're in different locations. So the originally planned performance will not be happening, but we are still extremely lucky to have them here to answer your questions. I will start with some questions that were submitted before and they were um, anonymous. Some of them were not anonymous, but there was like so many questions. So of the same question, I decided to just group them into one. So the first anonymous question for you guys, what is one piece of advice that you guys hope to carry with you guys for the rest of your life? Kind of a deep one. That is a deep one to start out on. Gracie, do you have any immediate immediate thoughts? Uh, probably the thought of no one knows anything is like a really good one for all I think it applies to everything, but particularly in the arts where like everyone's opinion is usually about whatever they're making. They're extremely passionate. They have strong beliefs that they've accrued over their own careers. But, you know, I think it's, I think it's an exaggeration to say no one knows anything, but it's a, it's a fun and helpful little uh, sentence to sort of keep in the back of your mind when you're scared that you don't know what you're doing um it's often a good it's real a relief to remember that quite frankly nobody does <laughs> yeah no i think that that's that's definitely a good one and we definitely encounter people not knowing anything all the time i think that one thing that always sticks with me is um there's this great songwriter named adam schlesinger who actually passed away earlier this year of covid which was like really shocking um but he was actually a really close friend of me and Gracie and my whole family's and probably one of my like earliest musical mentors. And I felt really lucky to have him on a lot of levels. I, I, I specifically remember him just basically after a conversation about like where to kind of lean my sound um, and realizing that I gravitated naturally towards some styles that were maybe not exactly the most popular, especially at the time, with this sort of like soul funk, kind of like Randy Newman type of thing that I'm really into that was is actually maybe a little more popular now than it was at the time that we were having these conversations. But him just kind of saying, like, if that's what comes naturally to you, you're going to be able to take that further than, like, just do the thing that you feel like you can do really well, and, like, you'll push the ceiling of that further than you'll be able to push something that has a already paved path but isn't as organic to you, if that makes any sense. No, yeah, I totally get what you mean. And I'm so sorry that about that. I actually... um have listened to a lot of his work before so it's I'm really thankful that you felt comfortable sharing that with us today thank you so much um so yeah, I'm yeah, sorry he's off so deep <laughs> no, that's um, a good one there. I didn't do it. moving uh I guess this is a good segue into the next question um this was asked by a, a, a lot of people um who are your biggest influences and why for music obviously Gracie should we go like back and forth each saying one at a time you can start. Carol King. Stevie Wonder. Josh Stone. Uh, ben Folds. 
Beatles. Um, Aretha Franklin. Etta James. D'Angelo. Um, Beyonce. Mm. Uh, I'll say Squeeze, which is kind of a random band, but a, one of my one of our favorites. I'll, I'll go in. I'll go in a weird direction with you and say like Nelly Mackay. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good a pretty good cross section. I think that we like things that are uh soulful and that have a lot of personality and quirkiness. Like I think we could even have thrown some Broadway musical soundtracks into that list. Um I also have recently gotten really into a lot of like classic rock that women sing. Like I used to be obsessed with the Go Go's and I don't think that this comes out so much in our music, but like I really love like Blondie and Janis Joplin and Linda Ronstadt, like very different, uh, different eras of rock music from women, but kind of a cool. I think it comes out. out a little bit maybe in the energy of how you perform. Yeah, yeah. But There's a lot of really great live footage of a lot of those women, which I feel like in some ways you actually have less uh, like authentic live footage from some like artists today and those videos are all just like the most raw <laughs> them just screaming into a mic which is really fun to watch um yeah no yeah I can totally see that I've I've unfortunately never got to see to gone to see you guys live but I've seen videos and you definitely kill it on stage Lauren Gracie and um I think that was a really good variety of artists. Whoever asked, I'm sure you completely answered their question and beyond. Moving on, another question that was asked by also multiple people. Uh, what is, you guys have collabed with lots of artists, um, obviously John Bellion and also um, like Anderson Pack, like a good, a good mix. No, we sorry, haven't sorry. Anderson oh my that. God. But that, <laughs> that would be insane. cool. I'm down something, to just, do that. something just popped on my screen that said that, and that's why my brain got scrambled. Yeah, this is this will be cut out of the footage. <laughs> just that's go all right. it, no, honestly. I'm, I'm perfectly happy for people to think that we have collaborated with Anderson. Pack. Yeah, I should have turned off my notifications before starting this. Everything's <laughs> popping up. Okay, um, but yeah. So I guess the question was, what is your dream collab? And yeah, any any artist in the world, what would be your dream collaboration? There's so many. Um, I'm trying to think of like who would be top of my list. I mean, I think we have so many people that we love. Um, I feel like Chance the Rapper is probably someone that comes to mind as like the, a dream collab. Um, honestly, John and Bellion was our like dream collab and that worked out really nicely. <laughs> yeah, we've just collaborated with a bunch of our friends too. Like, uh, Brass tracks and they're really incredible and um that was that was a dream because we actually were we knew of them and they knew of us before we like became friends and so that was a cool thing where we just were like admirers of each other and then kind of got to make music together which was really fun um i don't know clyde who do you think would be your dream? oh also yeah. like liz, i think lizzo would be my dream collab right now <laughs> Lizzo would definitely be cool. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that this sounds really like ridiculous to say, but I think that if you had asked us this exact question like five years ago, we're so incredibly lucky to have actually either played shows with or collaborated with a lot of the artists that would have been on our list at the time, which is uh, I really don't take that for granted how lucky that is um, this early in our career, having, you know, Obviously, we've been working a ton with John Bellion on a variety of different projects. Um, and then having toured with Lake Street Dive and done stuff with Wolfpack and Jacob Collier and, uh, and Eric Krasno. Yeah, there's a, there's a wide variety of really awesome artists that we've gotten to cross paths with in Brass Tracks as well. Um, but yeah, I think that... I think that um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's maybe like an like I don't know. I feel like I would love to collab with like 
a artist from like an older generation and try to like have me be the more I'm so used to being the old soul in a room of like more modern minded collaborators, if that makes sense. And I'm the person like bringing the seventies mind to it. And I think I would love to like work with, um, like earth, wind and fire or like, uh, or like Brian Wilson or someone like that. And like, really like go to the source of these like authentic artists that I like look up to so much and have me be the like, you know, millennial in the room. That'd be a fun change for me. No. Yeah. Maybe one day they will invent a time machine where we can all be able to do that. Right. But um, just reading some comments right now, there's a Noah said he saw you guys in Lancaster, William oh, in Vancouver, cool. Adrian in Cleveland, all saying that you guys were killer. So confirming oh. that. <laughs> And That's awesome. Well, we literally just got off a call right before this where we were beginning to finally, hopefully, plan some touring for once this is uh, all over. Uh, so we'll be back to all, I believe, all of those places were literally mentioned on the call as we begin to round our, our touring. So can't wait to get back to that. And then I think Noah also said, please collab with Anderson Pack. That we can that yeah you got it for you we will do it <laughs> okay and then um i guess let's move on from me let's bring in some actual fans uh if you guys are comfortable um i think i have courtney written down if you have your question and you're open yeah sure can you hear me yeah yes <laughs> hi um okay. so i guess my question was um as both someone who's creative and going to art school right now and like just living through the pandemic, I feel like there's been so many changes and like weird things I've had to grapple with in terms of like being able to create like Zoom calls and like not being able to be like in a physical space. And so I was just wondering like how this has impacted like your music writing process if it has and like what you've done or had to do in order to like handle that. Yeah. First of all, I see your handle, and I know all of your art. You're incredible. You're <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, didn't you do the art for the John thing from yesterday? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> That's so funny. I don't know if you know this, but I actually co-produced that event with Jordan from yeah. Lawrence. So I think I probably like owe you money right now or something. <laughs> well, I already got paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome though. That's so that's so fun. It's actually a perfect segue into the into what you just said, which is like trying to do uh, virtual. You know, there's so many things. Well, I, Gracie, maybe you can talk about it better than me. But like, I think that there's so much about the virtual world that we're trying to tap into with things like what we did last night with John. Yeah, I think we've had some some stuff during this time that has sort of come up that wouldn't come up in a normal circumstance, like almost trying to look at the things that you could do now that you wouldn't be able to do in other times is maybe the sort of like glass half full approach to being creative in this time. Some of those things are as simple as like, I just really didn't engage ever with TikTok. It seemed like a whole world that I just like didn't know and didn't want to totally. deal with. And like, even just having the extra time to be like, okay, this is a real thing and I need to learn about it. And we put up just some random videos on TikTok and one of them like blew up and now we have like a whole TikTok presence, which is, you know, it, it sounds it sounds like so simple, but sometimes you do need the extra time or the to just like go out of your comfort zone a little bit and learn about things that you wouldn't normally do, not necessarily even in a creative way, but in a like purely, uh, you know, I've always heard about this thing and I've never done it. And it, I've heard that it would be really good for me to put my art here or to do whatever, like just basic things that I think really wouldn't have happened if not for this. Or even just like process wise, like literally like Gracie and I are just used to having other people in the room that are doing some of like the engineering, for example. So it's like usually, you know, for the last year or two, if I'm in the room working on music, usually one of the other guys in the band or even John has been like 
they're like really doing a lot of the aspects of it. And then all of a sudden now Gracie and I, obviously they still all work on it. We all work on it from our separate places for the most part. But like, you know, I've had to like break out equipment that I was like, I've never really taken the time to figure out how to use this, but I kind of need to now if we want to do it ourselves, you know? So I think definitely there's a lot of that. But I guess to answer your question a little more directly also about just like how to keep the creative energy up. I mean, I think that, you know, one of the things that maybe Clyde and I have had to do a little bit is like, we went so hardcore at the beginning of this quarantine and like we've released a ton of stuff during it, um, which I think is great. And, and being productive is really important. I think the other side of it that we're sort of approaching now is like, you know, this is a pandemic. There are so many things that cause you to not be able to do things and just having like a level of acceptance and uh, forgiveness to yourself as someone who creates a lot of things and saying like, this is out of my control. I'll do what I can, but what I can't do is totally okay. Is I think actually a really productive mindset in the long run um, and has at least for me felt like a really important uh, emotion to kind of embrace at this moment in the pandemic where it's like it's still going on and people are getting like pandemic fatigue and like not wanting to respect the rules or respect the boundaries it's like you have to forgive yourself for not being able to be the most productive that you could possibly be during this time um in order to you know respect the whole thing in the long run so I guess that's something I've had to think about yeah, I agree. I think, like, trying to remember, like, we are all human and we're going through unprecedented circumstances. So if we're not, like, 100% effective at all times right now, like, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. It's difficult, but especially because we're in the age of, like, we should be doing the most, you know, we're, like, Clyde and I are pretty young. So it's, like, this is the time when, theoretically, we're told that we should be doing so much stuff and and so re understanding what that means during this time is like really important thank you okay awesome <laughs> thank you for um for asking courtney but uh, moving on to the next person i think noah you had a couple questions if you're still down for that yeah i didn't write down the ones i put in the thing but i actually just came up with one if that's okay go for it yeah so i i grew up in a family with three siblings who are all musical and we we always did like the family band thing so what has that really done like being in a group together being an artist with your uh like respective sibling like what has that done for your relationship and how has it benefited you musically that's a great question so did you say that you are in a family band with your siblings or you're not oh i i well we were like growing up we're not currently right, right. but we always played together growing up right right yeah, I think that, um, you know, running a, running a creative endeavor and doing a creative partnership with someone is a really, like, intense experience. And then, you know, co-owning a business, which is really part of, you know, what a band is on a certain level with someone is, a, is an entirely other also really intense experience. So I think that Gracie and I have just really gotten to know each other, like, on such a deep level across so many different avenues. Um, and I think that's been great for our relationship. I think like, you know, we've had, we've talked about everything under the sun and I think that we know how each other's likely to feel about a certain thing all the time. And um, so I think, you know, I really, I truly genuinely can't imagine a set of siblings closer than Gracie and I are. And I think that we're very similar in a lot of ways, but we are very different in a lot of ways. So I think that, you know, sometimes conversations we'll have or situations we'll encounter will expose those differences between us. But usually we know each other so well that they don't even come as a surprise. And I think, I think that creatively it's cool because it is that balance of being really on the same page but having those slight differences where we have this total shared set of references that we're constantly 
uh, you know, pulling from. But at the same time, you know, we just kind of have this constant, like, two-headed monster between the two of us to, like, have a sort of wide variety of perspectives, um, not just in terms of, like, the music that we're into, but even just, like, whenever a Lawrence song is being written, there's a male perspective and a female perspective in, in, in the conversation at the same time. So I think it really, uh, I think it does cool things for, for our, for like my own individual creative. It's such a, like such a pleasure for me to be able to have half of the songs that I'm writing be from a female perspective, like how often would, or like that I'm co-writing be from a female perspective or what other opportunity would I get to do that really? Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. I, um, I think that it has made us really close and probably we have in some ways like an unconventional sibling relationship in that like, you know, I think for some siblings, if you know, you have areas of tension or like, which we really have very, very few. So I think in like normal life, we would just sort of be like, well, let's just like not deal with those things with each other, you know, like small inconsequential things. But if you're on the road with someone, you're running a business with someone, you're constantly making music with them. And you're also those, that music often reveals what you're personally going through. You kind of have to be just like all cards on the table with with each other about you know everything and i think that that's been um such an like it's it's been like such a cool thing to do and just like grow up doing is sorry there's clearly a lot of motorcycles outside of i don't know um but it's been a really fulfilling and cool thing to like do and um yeah it's super super fun at the end of the day to like be doing this with my family Thank you so much for that answer. Um, it's really cool how you guys are explaining like how making music with your sibling can be like the perfect balance of like differences and, sim and similarities because you grew up in the same household. And I definitely feel that like when I was playing with, whenever I would play with my brother, there are certain things that we both just understood because we grew up together. And it's just yeah. and, like you were saying, like references that you both understand musically and also just emotionally with each other. That's super oh. cool. Yeah, it's like a sixth sense kind of a thing. There are literally moments during shows with Gracie where, like, we'll look at each other and share a look and know what, you know, the other one is indicating, um, whether it's my voice isn't feeling good enough to go for that note I usually go for, or you do something different, or, you know, one of us looking at each other and it's a look of, like, you know, I forget what, what happens next in this, you know, like, there's always... Uh, I remember there was one time when I looked at Gracie and it was because I was like, oh my God, I forgot the next lyric to this song, like of ours. And, but I, I wasn't able to say that. It was just like, there was a little break in a song and I look, looked at Gracie and then she just like sang the lyric. And that was a really funny moment. That's funny. I don't even remember that, but I totally would know what you, your face would be. I think it was superficial. I think that, um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, and the last verse of superficial like, there's a break, and then, like, I'm supposed to sing something, and, like, right before it, I just, like, looked at you, and I must have had, like, such a, like, shock in my face, and then you just, like, were, like, da -da 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 -da, like, you sang the lyric, and I was, like, oh, yeah, okay, and then I just kept singing it. That was awesome, um, and I, thank you so much, Noah, for your question, um, and I, I really loved you guys' answer, like, obviously, um, music brings people together and being siblings, it totally makes sense why that bond would be completely magnified. And um, moving on to the next person, I think Zach, are you in here? I believe you had a couple questions as well. Yeah. So um, I just I just first wanna say it's so awesome that I get to kind of talk with you guys here. That's so like, thank you for doing this. It's so sick. Um, so I saw you guys open for John Bellion uh, during the Glory Sound Prep Tour in LA. And then after that, um, my girlfriend and I, who's in here too, Madeline, um, I took her to her first concert, which was that. Uh, and then we were like, who is this? <laughs> and so uh, we immediately went and like listened to all your music. And then my sister surprised us with tickets to your concert in LA. So um, anyway, oh, sorry. 
just giving you a little backstory, you guys have been in a really cool part of um, my life and Maddie's life. So anyway, uh, my question is, what is what is music production look like for you guys? And like what what program, what software do you guys use? I just um, like how long does it take? Like what what does music production look like to just make one song? Yeah, that's a really good question. There's no good answer to how long it takes because sometimes we'll make a song in a few days, like for the most part. The thing with our band that's maybe a little different than a lot of other bands is um, some bands that are more like traditional, um, they'll just like record the song in a recording studio with all the instruments playing their part, you know, like a live band. And then they kind of record the song and that'll kind of be it. And then they'll take a couple days to add stuff to it. And then for other artists, more modern pop kind of sound where there aren't as many live instruments, you could make that entire song on your laptop. For us, we're always striving to do a little bit of both. So, um, you know, we might spend a few days in the studio getting some digital aspects of it together but then we still need to get our horn players to come in and play a bunch of horns. We still need to get our drummer to come in and play live drums over, you know, the drums that we've made or that John has made, John Bellion has made for us or, you know, like, so I think our process is a little bit more time intensive just because we're trying to combine two different kinds of music making into one. And it's really important for us to have both live elements and this sort of like, in studio digital elements at the same time and really bridge that gap um so it can take a really long time and often we'll wait until like enough songs are done to justify bringing in the horns to then play on four songs instead of one at a time so it becomes a whole like honestly a whole like logistical especially during covid like task of like figuring out how to do it all in the most efficient way um but in terms of uh, software, we mostly use Logic. I think that Logic, similar to what um, I was just saying about our sort of creative philosophy, I think that Logic allows us to do those things in the best way. I think Pro Tools is really great for um, live instruments, but in my experience has been like a little bit less appealing to work with in terms of MIDI stuff. And I think Ableton is like so amazing for like the midi stuff and like the manipulation and all of that but maybe has slightly less features that are appealing to us in terms of live instrument recording so logic sort of hits that sweet spot for us awesome they and um yeah just just thank you guys for i uh, i hope I, I i didn't like were you gonna talk gracie i i hope i didn't okay um i i I agree. <laughs> but, but, and we, I think one of the other things that maybe is interesting is like, we do a lot of like circling back on things. Like I wouldn't say that we like finish a task and then like that task is not revisited, which maybe isn't an efficient way of doing things, but like we'll lay down a lot of vocal stuff and then be like, we'll come back to that another, another day or like, you know, revit. We do a lot of revisiting of things. Um, I think it helps, at least me mentally, to think <laughs> of locking anything in. And like, usually, eventually, you go with the thing that you originally did. <laughs> at least with us, but um, like philosophically, it's sort of uh, it's way too easy <laughs> in the modern music making process to not commit to decisions. Yeah. And we definitely lean into that. <laughs> and sorry, can I ask one more question that just came to mind? Um, I just, sorry, I just randomly thought of this. Uh, in the LA concert, the horns got down from the stage um, and started going through the audience. Was that planned or not? Because it seemed like it wasn't planned, but I'm not sure. I, I was just curious. Was that like... do that, but oh, okay. um, I, I, it's never really, Clyde and I are not, exactly privy to what's going on over there <laughs> you gotta just let them uh do their thing including like dances like i'm pretty sure Clyde has no idea what's going on because he can't see anything i have the privilege of like walking around and seeing what's going on on stage um 
But yeah, sometimes they do that. It depends on the venue. You can kind of see if they haven't thought about it before the show by like how much right before, you know, they're thinking about doing it. They're like, like looking at whether they can <laughs> um, But yeah, I, I'd say it, it, it's possible that if you come to another Lawrence show that they will do it, but I wouldn't be able to tell you whether yeah. or not. It's kind of like if you've ever read those things about how like, ants don't have their own mind it's like the whole ant the whole ant colony has a joint mind that's kind of the vibe of our horn section they'll just like look at each other and then they'll just like all jump in the crowd but it wasn't uh it wasn't pre-planned well it was really cool they passed right by us so <laughs> very cool yeah they're, they're anyway, nice. thank you guys thank you zach um and i think guys we only have time for one more question um, if Will is in here, I think you had a question. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I saw you guys in Vancouver. It was awesome. Thank you very much. I was talking to my friend who's a huge fan, couldn't make it, but, uh, just about some questions I wanted to ask. And one, one, one I came up with, uh, was like, how do you go from taking the idea of a, um, like just your general, like one or two kind of main ideas for a song and actually bring that into you know, the whole development of it and what it actually ends up being. Like, you're talking a little bit before about, um, you know, how you don't actually end up at a finished product. I, I think that um, no one ever <laughs> really feels that way. But uh, I find it personally a really hard, I find it very hard to, you know, do, to, to come up with something that just feels like out of left field for that song and really, like, give it more vigor than, than that initial idea. You know? Anyway, that was it. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um... It's a great question just about like songwriting process in general. We're lucky as Clyde said that like there are two songwriters in the band and then also a multitude of other people who are smart and producerial and and musical in our lives, um, including the rest of the band. And then also um, John Bellion and, you know, family. But um, we usually start with as you sort of said, like a small part of an idea. I think it's pretty rare that Clyde and I like sit down at a piano together and start a song. Like, I think we just both write so much on our own and all, always are have like four or five small little demo, like, you know, 20 seconds of a thing that we want to share with each other. And then what's really nice, and I think a good question to ask yourself if you're working alone or if you're working with someone else, a good question to ask them is sort of like, and, and to ask the other person what they hear in a song that maybe you wrote is like, what is the best part of this? What is the part that we want to say like is, you know, you're all in school, the thesis. Um, and then like how to make that into a song, um, I think accepting that something you bring to someone else or something that you, you know, lay down and then a little bit later go and listen to, like really being um, diligent about what is the most important part of it and then work from that point to see like what the rest of the song should be is um, I would say usually how our process works. Um, we often are like, bringing each other a verse and a chorus and then one of us is like I really like this line from this chorus and like that's the idea that I want to explode and make into a song like that one line inspires the whole thing like Clyde talks about this a lot for do you wanna but like the thought the song the reason that do you want to do nothing with me started was because he thought of I'll put on my finest sweatpants and order you pad thai and like asking yourself the question like is that good and if it is why is that good and what's the rest of what what is the world in which that idea explodes and also like in what part of the song is that best situated like that's yeah. the first part i came up with but then it becomes the question of like is that, that a chorus right yeah. like just because that was the most compelling thing that jumped out to me out of nowhere is that all of a sudden a song called sweatpants and pad thai like or which it could be like I, that sounds maybe funny like knowing that's that, that's that what we did but like if you just came up with that you may be like that's such a fun lyric that i'm going to make it that this chorus all culminates in 
I'll put on my finest sweatpants and order you pad thai, and that's the hook of the song. But then it, it takes a certain amount of like being able to put all the puzzle pieces in place to realize, and I actually did realize this before I even wrote the rest of the song, I was like, no, that's not the chorus. That's just like a great lyric in like the second verse that is going to really like put a real punchline on the song, but like what is the song that surrounds it? You know, I think it's about... It's like a jigsaw puzzle. You have a puzzle piece that you know goes somewhere, and then you have to go over to the box and and find pieces that you think might appropriately hook in to the left of it, to the right of it, above it, below it. And then you might find one that you think is going to, but then when you try it, it doesn't. And it's and that's sort of that's sort of like it, what it's like. And I think every song is a little bit different. The way that you go about that, you know, like I think about. Um, alibi this is sort of a random example but like we had like that chorus of just the like oh, oh, oh well, no, i don't know i gotta go oh, I don't like i don't even know if we had the we just had and we knew that the hook had to just be like and we were like for weeks we're just like what is because we were like it's gonna be a word and i had written that chorus during high school and it was like part of my senior project that I was like playing songs that I wrote and at the time it was called pretty girl it was like pretty girl which is like so weird um and not doesn't sound good to sing um but so for I remember for like weeks we weren't really like actively like being annoying about it but we were just like every so often we'd like float a, I don't know, a three syllable word that or like multiple words yeah. that syllable. Like, like occasionally, pie. Possibly, I'd be like, nope. Uh, and I remember coming home on the subway and just being like, alibi, and being like, whoa, the song should be called alibi. And then when we got home, we were like, what is a song? What is alibi? Like, what does that mean? So I think it's always just about once you have something that you know you're, that you like, that either sings well or sounds good or whatever working backwards from even literally just a word that you know you want working backwards to make the rest of the song the best version to amplify that idea is it's different every time what that means and what that looks like but I think calling it a puzzle is like the perfect way to, to encapsulate the entire experience of songwriting which is like you have something and then the rest of it is up for discussion debate uh, trial and error. Okay, yeah. Um, so thank you, Will, for your question. Uh, yeah, so that was the end. Thank you so much, Clyde and Gracie, for giving us your time and also for that mini performance at the end, Gracie. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I mean, before you guys go, we did. <laughs> Where you guys go, we did have a fun little poll that I thought you guys just might be interested in. Um, we had people just drop their favorite songs while we were on the topic of songs. Um, the top three, in no particular order, they all had the same amount of votes, were It's Not All About You, Weather, mm. and Casualty. And the first two are actually my personal favorites, so shout out to that. Glad you to hear it, the, the new ones. I'm glad That's you... All the newest song. That's oh, really? <laughs> That's great to hear. But yeah, so thank you so Very much. Cool. Thank you everyone for joining us. And yeah, thanks for joining. And feel free to go at your leisure and or stick around because me and my team are going to go over some stuff at the end. But everyone and obviously Clyde and Gracie, you guys are free. If you guys want to. Thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. In the end, here's the truth. Oh, baby, 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 it's not all about you.